Shalom. Hello, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakaha, Kodash. Double honors into the apostles, double honors into the elder bishops. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. The 144,000 and the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth among the heathen nations that look like those heathen nations. And to the few aquaf that are listening and learning to you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago coming at you with another lesson in truth. And uh, this video is called, I Was Wrong. You Need to Worry About the Killers on Your Street. And it, this video couldn't have come out at a more perfect time. Because yesterday there was a video uh, where I think it was John Ritter had a guest on there. Um, or either it was uh, Andy Hafong. And the guy was talking about the wars that's going to start in the streets in Chicago and other places. going to be the epicenter. Basically with Judah, the so-called black man, going against and fighting with the Venezuelans. And that is just one Venezuelan killing a, a black gangbanger or a Mexican gangbanger to set off riots in the streets of it. And, you know, and basically, and how, you know, the, the, the blacks need to tool up and join with the white man to defend America from these Venezuelans and these, you know, and Esau just trying to push a narrative because they know that the chaos and the riots are coming. But, you know, even though a lot of a lot of Judah is pissed off and, and he was right about the fact that they had heat and buses for the Venezuelans while homeless Americans, homeless blacks, homeless veterans, homeless whites in, included. But, you know, uh, were freezing to death. And I saw a video where. They had nine signs up uh, in nine different languages on uh, how, you know, any any of the uh, uh, migrants can travel to any place in the country if they wanted to go. All they have to do is let someone know. Um, and, you know, and and uh, and it was up, up was up in nine different languages and they can go wherever they wanted to by car, train, or, you know, uh, it was by bus, train, train or automobile. I mean, bus, train or, or plane. And um, of course, the taxpayers got to play for it. But but you but you know what? Who's orchestrating all this? The very person that you see on the screen, and leaving a little person like him behind. But it's his people that's doing this. So the problem is, is that he's the real enemy. All right, and and even more so, he's an enemy to himself because you know I've been saying it for quite some time in our street teachings and in my lessons. They're tooling up, as you'll hear him say, to, uh, you know, to fight the zombies. Zombies was a racist code word for, you know, Negroes and Hispanics and anyone who's, uh, you know, the color of a, a paper bag or darker. That's who the zombies were when they were coming to these uh, militias and white superiorities, et cetera, et cetera. But we, we've been telling you, the men of the Lord, that they bought all them guns and they're only going to turn them on each other. Right, they're only going to turn them on each other. So, let me uh, get on to the scriptures. So, I have to give you the context of what the other video was about before uh, I start playing this one and you know and doing a quick commentary because this is about a, a, a twelve-minute uh, video, and I'm probably going to let about seven minutes of it, seven or eight minutes of it play, and you know and, and give scripture commentary. But I want to start open with this one. Which is uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and uh, 1. And it reads, Remember thou thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. So you, you want to remember the Lord now before the lights go out and call and, and learn and call on a, on a proper name. Stop celebrating these uh, these unholy days, all right? Learn about the high holy days in the Bible. Learn about your culture, all right? You know, and, and stay away from these pagan holidays like Christmas, Thanksgiving, you know, and, and Halloween and all that sort of thing, all right? So because the, the hearts of many are going to wax cold very soon, all right? As a matter of fact, let's get that, and then we're going to let him begin to talk. So that was definitely one of the precepts I was going to bring out, which is why that popped out. 
But this is uh, Matthew 24 and 12. And it reads, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. All right? So people are going to be cold-hearted toward one another and toward other people. And a lot of people are going to die. A lot of people are going to help people to die or let people die. Just so that they can have a few more moments of, uh, of, of, of life or pleasure. They'll take someone else's. All right? Without any further ado, you know, um, full spectrum survival. Neighbor looked at me and he said, as soon as the cops stop rolling, I'm taking out that person, I'm taking out that person, and I'm taking out that person. And I looked him right in the eye and I said, what you're talking about is premeditated murder. Guys, you got to watch out because there are people that are operating on this sort of dysfunction in this world today. Just waiting. This is a guy. He's a Christian. He's going to church. Let's stop right there. He's a Christian. He's going to church. Let's keep it honest, you know. <laughs> Look, the, the Nazis were Christians. Even more so, the, 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 the settlers that came over to America and colonized were Christians. The, 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 the ones that went to Australia were Christians. The ones that took over Europe, all right, uh, later on became Christians. So Christians are responsible for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of murders, deaths, Land, uh, stolen land, stolen property, stolen heritages, right? They even stole the heritage of other people. And this was all done by Christians. So who do you expect is going to do the most of the majority of the killing when that time comes until the Lord comes and lifts up the standard and gives the power to his future judges, to the elect down here on earth, you know, to become uh, immortal superhumans. To survive what, what's going to happen down here. All right. Every single week. He's <laughs> thinking about nothing. He said he goes to church every week, but he said as soon as the cops start rolling, he's taking out that person, that person, and that person. And he told him, bro, you, 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 you're talking about premeditated murder. Well, you know, a lot of you women are going to get visited on that day, too, who've wronged a lot of these men. All right. Well, there's a lot of men that are that are in prison because of the lies of a woman, all right, or or in prison because of a uh, failure to pay Title Four D support, spousal support, no matter uh, you know false charges of rape, fa uh, uh, false charges of uh, 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 abuse, and all sorts of things, all right. So yeah, when these lights go out, when these power power outages go out. Yeah, it's going to get ugly out here. More than his life today, but he has grudges with individuals. You have to be prepared to operate against people that you wouldn't even consider a threat because they are the ones who maybe you cut them off in traffic. <clears throat> maybe they're in the same apartment complex as you. Maybe they're in your neighborhood and you complained to the HOA about something or they complained about yours and you gave them the old finger as they drove by the street. These are people who have lost their freaking minds and they are going to hold onto that grudge against you and your family and you're not going to expect it. So that's another level of this operation you need to take into consideration that as soon as you start. So you got to also like now that he said that, you know, be wise in your speech. You know, so a soft answer can turn away, turn away wrath, you know, and that 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 disagreement you had with the neighbor, the guy across the street or whatever. Yeah, they could be just sitting back waiting. You know, I remember watching the uh, the Purge. Uh, you know, uh, they had a, a two two television seasons, and there was a and there was a one season when the uh, when the college kid, you know, little, the little Asian dude, was hooked up with Esau, and they couldn't wait to the Purge so they can go out and murder people together. And a little Chinese dude or a little Asian guy, I don't know if he was Chinese, Japanese or whatever, but he was definitely, you know, of a, what they what they refer to as Asian. He was Aminomoab, one or the other. And every time somebody pissed him off, he just put them on his list. 
and people are really going to think like that. So you really have to, you know, this, you know, just consider you really need to get into this debate, into this issue with, you know, certain individuals. Sometimes you can just hold your peace or just walk away. But this is Ephesians 5 and 16, and it reads, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Matter of fact, let me read up above it. Let's read 15 as well. All right. And it reads, see that you walk circumspectly and not as fools, but as wise. All right. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. That woman who got that, that belt thrown around her neck, choked out and then penetrated and, and left a this deposit of protein in, inside of her against her will. She was very, very uh, nonchalantly not being circumspect of her surroundings at all. That you didn't notice this guy that you walked past that had a shirt pulled up over his face, you know, so that he couldn't be seen. All right. So, and at least he didn't kill him. Because, you know, when the lights go out and food is scarce, you know, these, they, these, you know, well, how did that woman say in, in that opening scene of the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the road, when she walked out into the cold to just die, she was tired, left her husband and her son. She said, they're going to come in here. They're going to kill you. They're going to rape me. They're going to rape our son. And then they're going to eat us. So yeah, cannibalism is, is going to come back. All right. You know, my, uh, my stepson drives trucks and I told him, you know, he, he got a little money from when his, uh, grandfather died and he bought his own truck that's what he wanted to do and i told him you know he I, what is he, he had that truck a little over two years now but i told him before he even got it that the trucking industry is in danger that the trucking industry is all, you can't count on anything all right this place is deteriorating it's going down the drain and now he's talking about how bad it is that he wants to sell you know and you know the, hey, the young man could cook his ass off all right so he's like, well, you know, I don't want to take my truck and trade it in and get a food truck. Because when things, you know, people go always want to going to eat. That's, and you know, I'm thinking to myself, you know, and and he gets that that's that that notion to be, you know, self-employed and stuff like that. For me, that's you know, I've I've worked for myself for the last 30 something years of my life for the most part. And up until the crash, well, that also was a part of the truth. Because once you come into this truth, things change. You have to pick up your cross and bear it. The Lord uh, definitely make you suffer. <laughs> like uh, I was watching a video with the beloved elder Apostle Kabar, and he was saying, if you're not suffering in this thing, so uh, year, I, if you're not suffering in this thing, the, you know, the Lord is probably not with you. See, and that's some kind of weird thing, virus. My phone just cut on. I got to get a new phone. This is ridiculous. All right. But... Uh, but yeah, so be circumspect, circumspect when you're moving about, because it's about to get crazy out here. Realizing there's a 911 problem. The paramedics aren't running. The cops are already too busy. You've got to be ready to just hunker down, lock down your shelter, lock down your security immediately. So anybody thinking about, well, I'm just going to go out to the store, anybody thinking I'm just going to make that one last minute run, then either everybody better stay or everybody better go. That is, unless you have such a group and such a tightly worked family that everybody has their own security under control. If you can leave a bunch of operators... He's hinting that you're all well-armed and prepared. All right? Is at home while a bunch of operators go on a mission to the grocery store or to the last-run supply store, then that's okay. Do they understand what it's going to be like if they can't get back home? Do they have with them the water the water purification, the ammunition. Nobody really realizes when they're carrying their, C uh, their, uh, their car kit or they're carrying their everyday kit, their EDC, they don't really realize. If you don't know what EDC means, that means everyday carry. That's people who, who are uh, concealed carry or, or they conceal carry anyway, even if they have, don't have the, the license. Many people do. All right. That you have to survive past that first 
gun battle. You have to survive past the first stabbing attack. You have to survive past the first riot that you get through. And you have to keep going and going and going. And that's how it's going to happen because all these people who are so prepared, the chances of you actually being at home to where all your guns are, all your food, all your stuff, the chances are that you're not going to be home. All right. Most people work don't work walking distance from the house. All right. Or, you know, walking distance meaning that there's, you know, like a 10 or 15 minute walk. Most people are, are you know, 40 minutes to, you know, 40 to 45 to 50 minutes away uh, on a car ride. So that means two, three hours to get home and you got to get home. That's like, you know, trying to get home like the Warriors and every gang in the city is looking for you and the cops. All right. You, you think you, you, you got to get through all that. Look, if the Lord is not with you. So you're talking about surviving the first gun battle, surviving the first knife attack. You know, only if only if the Lord is with you, man. Will you will you even come close to uh, uh, to any of those things? All right. This is uh, Amos. Five and 19 in the reads. Matter of fact, I started uh, 18. And it reads, Woe to you that desire the day of Yahweh, to what end is it for you? The day of Yahweh is darkness and not light. It's going to be a dark day. Darkness both in, in, in deeds and the power is going to go out. So it's going to be a lot of women, you know, getting belts thrown around in there. A lot of men too. You know, you got you got them booty warriors out there who want that booty. All right. Fine woman right there with all that front and back and all the good stuff. But they still want a man's booty. Them, them do. They out there, too. All right. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him. Or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. So you just ran from a lion. Barely got away from that, ran into a bear. Somehow you managed to, you know, miss his swipe with his paws. All right. You ran inside, slammed the door, tired, leaning on the door, and then the snake got you. All right. Well, that serpent also could be, you know, an Edomite. You know, they are the serpent seed. So you ran in there, <laughs> you know, and got away from all that only to get got by the devil himself. But it's going to get pretty bad out there. But let us continue. Until you get home. And so carrying just a couple of rounds or carrying a small pea shooter, you know, this is just a pocket carry for me, right? It's called a plinker. It's that, called a dinker. Uh, that looked like a derringer. That's a two shot. A plinker, a dinker. I never heard of those terms, but clearly that's some Edomite shit. But. Called it skull candy. It is a 22 that will do its damage. And it will do its damage quickly. So if you're not, uh, and you know, one of the brothers, a medic, you know, in the camp, beloved brother Shatia, he, he even told me once that the worst, some of the worst gunshot wounds are with the small caliber, the 22. He said, yeah, that's some of the worst ones. Um, and maybe it's because they're so small and they kind of go in and they move around and it's, they're hard to pull out. And a lot of people bleed out before, you know, before the, the you know, the medical can, you know, and can say get a chance to save them. It causes a lot of uh, because it's such a small caliber, and I guess it just moves and bounces around. Where the bigger ones don't tend to do that. They just go in, tear up stuff, do their damage, and you know, and then you know it's bigger, so they can find it and whatever. So those those twenty twos are actually pretty lethal. All right, they're they're dangerous. All right, they may not have the stopping power that. That uh, you know, bigger calibers have, but they definitely do damage. Operate in a way that you're going to have more than this when things really go sour. Then you're not going to be ready for gun battle number two, for altercation number two. Now I am a firm, firm believer. So this dude describing the, the day of John Wick, <laughs> gun battle after knife fight after gun battle. But guess what? It's going to actually be like that. It's it's going to get pretty bad out here. All right. And it's going to get pretty bad. Uh, let me see. Let me grab another scripture. 
So I have so many in mind right now. Thinking of uh, Isaiah the 13th chapter. There's a lot in there I can read. But I want to go to uh, 2nd Ezra. 6. 2nd Ezra 6. Oh yeah, and twenty-two because a lot of this chaos is going to happen when the dollar crashes, and it's, it's you know, and it's going to happen. It probably won't, you know. It's probably going to happen during the work day, so people going to be out and about, and it's going to cause a lot of chaos. So everyone's got to make it home now. You know, you commuters who who commute an hour, two hours away, now you got to try to get home on foot. You got to make it so. A lot of you not going to make it. But it, this is 2nd Ezra 6 and 22. And it reads, And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown, and the four storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. And the trumpet shall give a sound. Damn phone. And the trumpet shall give a sound. When every man heareth, they shall be suddenly afraid. Those are going to be those sirens. Those are, uh, you know, like the sirens that go off when it's a tornado or disaster sirens. Or like, like the purge. And at that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies. And the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. And the springs of fountains shall stand still. And in three hours they shall not run. And they're talking about power outages, you know, and keep warning of cyber attacks and power outages. Look, the, uh, the water didn't used to be attached to the power. So that was done purposely for this reason. This is, the, and you know, because even in this video begins to talk about orchestrated events, orchestrated, dis, you know, illnesses, orchestrated failures and things that he doesn't, you know, you know, orchestrated. You need to escape and avoid at all costs. Why not take yourself defendable? You have to try this final skincare. Rock, yeah. My skin secret? Go the way. I've already course. seen a manner. I'll get away from that location. They don't want to keep chasing at you. You're not saying, oh, you know, I'll put you down. I'm going to put you in the ground. No, why? They'll know that you can by you not saying anything. My hand will be ready. It'll be on a self-defense tool. Give them a nod and back up. Walk away. They can keep talking. But until they enter my threat zone, until they are a threat to me, or until they pull something out that has the ability to reach out and touch me, then they're nothing more than that crackhead down the street. And isn't it funny how in today's age, that's what we're really attributing survivalism to. That's what our whole world comes down to, is that the crackhead down the street, and those are things like bird flu, that's the crackhead down the street, uh, North Korea and their nuclear weapons program, crackhead down the street, the U.S. and their biological programs that they have created, that crackhead's getting a little bit closer. Wow. Government tyr tyranny. That crackhead's getting a little bit closer. China, crackhead down the street for right now. But at any moment in time, that crackhead, like a zombie, might turn his eyes to you and start running at you. And you have to be prepared to deal with it. Hey, so shit's about to get real. And it's funny how he uses the, the term zombie. And, and uh, like I said, that, that term was used by, by racists to describe Jake on the sly. Then he, and, now, and now he's using crackhead. To, this, to, to, to as a metaphor for any issue, any problem, and but the funny thing is that crack was a, was a was created in a laboratory by people that looked like him, all right, and then and released into a certain demographic. Okay, so it all goes back to to E, and orchestrated. He, he said the government, the, the the American government orchestrating stuff. Well, and that's why the people are, are in an uproar. Um. And, and coming against the narrative, the Israeli narrative is failing. They're being exposed. You know, these world leaders are being exposed that they're they've basically sold out their countries and their governments to these privately owned entity and businesses. Big businesses have taken over your government for the most part. All right. So this is second Ezra uh, 15. Because all this has got to happen It's prophecy and 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draw of nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another with swords in their hands. That's those tools he was talking about. For there shall be sedition among men, invading one another, and they shall not regard their kings nor their princes in the course of their actions. They shall stand in their power. So they're getting ready to fight against their governments and against their leaders and against each other. Like the name of this video is. I was wrong. You need to be worried about the killers on your street. 
these Edomites are so worried about Jake and they need to be worried about Bob, you know, and Brandon across the street with all with that with all them guns. All right. Kyle, what is his name? <laughs> you know, to shut up the, the, the BLM people. You don't need to be worried about him. All right. Hey, so with that, I'm gonna give all praises, all honor unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakaha Kwadash, Kwam Yasharala, Shalom, Ababa Ball.